Dak prove to you yesterday? He answered critics. Everyone was saying, basically, Dak, you stink. Yeah. Dak, we thought you were a franchise quarterback since I thought I looked at him in the preseason mm -hmm. of his rookie year and thought, that guy looks like he's got something. Right. And then he started to show it. And, and, and but it got to the point where and Dak is the future and who's going to be better Dak or Wentz. It got to the point where I mentioned last week, you know, whenever you hear people loving a guy because he has that special something careful because that's Mark Sanchez before the draft who's OK, but that's all he is. Right. Careful. Is that code for nah, the guy's not that good? That's what Dak was hearing. And look, the Jags defense was not good and it hasn't been good for a couple weeks. But Dak positively gashed the defense, not only with his legs, he was also reading it well and delivering the ball accurately. Mm -hmm. That was a statement game from Dak Prescott. You could say that. I could look at Jacksonville's defense and tell you they didn't show up. I mean, A.J. Bouye got schooled by Cole Beasley yesterday. Mm -hmm. Let's just call it what it is. Everywhere that Cole Beasley was doing something, Bouye was in the vicinity. Shout out to you the understand what I'm saying? It was, it was one of the – remember how we were talking about – remember how we were talking about Anthony Barr a few weeks ago for Minnesota mm -hmm. and how he was getting torched against the Rams every play. Every time the Rams made a play, you know, whether it was Woods, it was Cup, it was somebody, uh, Barr was in the vicinity. That was A.J. Bouye against Cole Beasley yesterday. A very, very bad night for him. We got to acknowledge that. Obviously, they were sitting up there. They, were, they weren't doing what they were supposed to do gap-wise in terms of discipline. That was a problem. But Blake Bortles, he can't stop the bleeding. And you also got to remember this about Jacksonville Jaguars. Run percentage last year, number one in the NFL at 46%. This year, they're 26th, running 30, 31%. What in God, Now, I understand that Leonard Fournette is hurt. I get that. But Yeldon is not a scrub. Mm -hmm. Why are you running the ball 15% less of the time now He's than you did last year? He's been dealing with injuries, year? too, though. I, I, yeah. But, but, yeah, but defense and run go hand in hand. What I'm, saying yeah. to you, what I'm saying to you, Molly, is that if you don't believe in Blake Bortles, mm -hmm. which they don't, yeah. guess what you got to do? Run, run you got to manufacture a way to run the ball that's more why, just to keep the ball out of the That's possession. why I think I don't know if it's smart for us to write yeah. them off totally, though, because Leonard Fournette will be back. And I'm not writing them off totally. I'm just saying that they don't believe in Bortles, and they yeah. shouldn't, that and true. that's a problem. That is true. I feel like with Dak, I think it's more so the, the offensive coordinator and the offense decided to use him the way Dak is supposed to be used. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He had 82 yards rushing, yep. obviously over 200 yards throwing. That's the balance that is Dak Prescott. He runs the football. He is a running quarterback. He's a big physical quarterback that can run the football outside of the tackles. Yep. He understands how to do that, and as a receiver – when you're going through games, especially early on, and you're not getting the ball, there's inconsistencies, and you're not getting the ball as much as you'd like, you're open, but you're not getting it, or he's looking elsewhere and things like that, they weigh on you. And I think Dak knew that, and I think that the receiving core might have expressed that, or the offense might have expressed mm -hmm. that to him. And he's like, okay, I got y'all. See, your point about, about putting guys in positions to win mm -hmm. where they succeed, to me, resonates today especially because – you know what I noticed from yesterday? Of all, like one of the big takeaways for me was Josh Gordon on the Patriots, mm -hmm. where the fact that Bill, if it's because it's Bill Belichick, you can take a guy who's not working out, who's having problems, but he's talented, mm -hmm. and the Patriots will make it work mm -hmm. out. Bill Belichick, not just strong leadership with Brady, that has something to do with it too, but Belichick will put that guy in a position to do his thing. And what the Cowboys haven't done, because lack of imagination with the coaching staff, mm -hmm. is put their players, who aren't great, but aren't scrubs either, well, in positions to do their they thing. They weren't doing it. We can't argue over the last two weeks that they haven't done that with Cole Beasley, based on the way that he's performed since he's opened his mouth mm -hmm. about how he was open, and mm -hmm. oh my goodness, you know, what more can and we when do? You're in that so that put, room, that and put, you're looking at the film, and you're right? seeing yourself open, Dak sees that, well, and the offense sees I'm, that. I'm saying that because I'm coming to a question before we get on out of here, Victor. Mm -hmm. We understand that they basically called Dak out, and Dak has responded. I'm talking about his own receivers, because yep. Alan Hearns has said something too. So Cole Beasley is definitely being fed. Let's transition to Jacksonville. As a receiver, what are you seeing from your quarterback, Blake Bortles, right now? What are you seeing? Nothing. Inconsistencies. Especially when you're a receiver that's down the field, and those guys are getting open. Those guys are creating separation. Those guys are where they're supposed to be and how they're supposed to be, but Blake isn't getting them the football. 
the inconsistencies that are happening with Blake Bortles is not going to be beneficial to that team in order for them to win because you got to get the ball downfield. And like you said, you got to run the football to create that balance if you're not going to have that trust in Blake Bortles. It's just mm -hmm. not going to win you ballgames. Yeah, but as far as the Cowboys, they certainly looked like they were on the same page and bounced back responding to that criticism. I thought you would have mentioned your boy Jerry grabbing headlines with Conor McGregor. <laughs> Still in the show. Again. Can I, tell you, can I yeah. tell you honestly and just real quick what I felt? I looked at Conor McGregor there and everybody celebrating them, and I'm like, I love Conor McGregor. He's yeah. box office. He got his butt whipped. Yeah. I was there two weeks ago. He got it. He, I mean, more than a week ago, brother. Mm -hmm. Nurmagomedov Medov gave it to him. Yeah. When you show up after that and you're being celebrated, it's just a turn off for it me. It bothers you a little. It's just a turn yeah. off for me. Yeah. It's just a turn off for me. I mean, what, I mean, you'd have thought he was Nurmagomedov. Medov. That left-handed throw wasn't too pretty either. No. But that was so like Jerry take, to have him. You should take a little break from being at football games yes. or sporting events after you just got your I don't even mind you the showing up at the walk on the field and celebrating. Yeah. Well, yeah. well except, that, except that I like the fact that in the UFC, guys fight, and if you lose, it's not the end of the world because you're always fighting someone good. I, I got no problem with that. I agree, but uh.